Hello and welcome to our video tour series of our current exhibition, Northern Pine, Watercolors and Drawings by the Group of Seven from the McMichael Canadian Art Collection. My name is Victoria Verge. I'll be leading you through the last episode of this series where we will explore the final days of the Group of Seven and find out more about the legacy that they left behind. As we head into the final weeks of this exhibition, being on display here at the Kelowna Art Gallery, we encourage you to drop by to see the show if you haven't already. Or if you're tuning in from further away, be sure to check out our other videos and programming that have accompanied this exhibition during its time here with us. In our last video tour, we took a closer look at each of the original founding members of the Group of Seven, and today we'll be talking about the legacy that they left behind, the reason for their disbandment in 1933, and the growth of Canadian art since then. The group's depictions of rugged, windswept forests of the Canadian Shield were eventually equated with a romanticized notion of Canadian strength and independence. By the peak of their fame in the mid-1950s, reproductions of their paintings hung on classroom walls in every school and held pride of place in Canadian museums across the country. During the war, these images even hung in bunkers overseas to remind soldiers of home. Every discussion of Canadian art inevitably acknowledged their importance to an evolution of national vision. Nationalism created the Group of Seven, but in the end, it limited their accomplishments. They were so successful in presenting their art as the visual expression of nationalism that the quality of their art is often overlooked. Nevertheless, the group introduced the idea that Canadian art could be important, that it could make a noise, and that it could earn a place on the international stage. It galvanized the national art community and ultimately stimulated the development of the museums and government bodies that would pave the road for artists who followed. Harris and Jackson, in particular, influenced and encouraged the next generation of Canadian artists. Lismer, MacDonald, and Varley all became distinguished and influential teachers the group's influence was so widespread that by the end of 1931, after J.E.H. MacDonald's death in 1932, they no longer found it necessary to continue as a group of painters. They announced that the group had been disbanded and that a new association of painters would be formed. This group would then be known as the Canadian Group of Painters. The Canadian Group of Painters was originally made up of a group of 28 painters from all across Canada which eventually consisted of the majority of Canada's leading artists, as well as former Group of Seven members, Harris, Casson, Lismer, Jackson, and Carmichael. This expansive and more inclusive group of Canadian painters allowed for the next generation of artists to continue what the Group of Seven had started. This group, which now included female artists such as Emily Carr and a wider national reach, was able to continue developing Canadian art movement while exploring a variety of themes and techniques. The Canadian Group of Painters held its first exhibition in 1933 and continued to hold exhibitions almost every year as a successful society until 1967. They are historically recognized as having a significant impact on the Canadian art movement and forever changed the style and spirit of Canadian art. Today you will find the vast majority of the artworks made by the Group of Seven housed at the McMichael Canadian Art Collection, an art gallery with an institutional focus on the group in Kleinberg, Ontario. In addition to housing this collection of works, the museum property also contains the burial grounds for six of the members of the group, including A.Y. Jackson, Arthur Lismer, Frederick Varley, Lauren Harris, Frank Johnston, and A.Y. Casson, along with four of the artist's wives. The McMichael Cemetery is situated in the small patch of consecrated land bordered by trees with graves marked by large chunks of the Canadian shield. 
The legacy left behind by these men was vast and has remained an impactful piece of Canadian art history for years. Their work continues to inform artists working almost a century later and will for many years yet to come. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of one of Canada's national treasures in art history, uncovering the lives of these men through their watercolors and drawings has been a great experience for all of us here at the gallery, and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you for tuning into this series. Be sure to keep an eye on our website and social media platforms to stay up to date on what's coming up next. We hope to see you there. Thank you.